While fertility rates have been dropping for nearly a century, one solution looming on the horizon artificial wombs. Scientists first introduced the bio bag back in 2017, a type of artificial womb used to grow a baby lamb. According to a recent article in Science and Stuff magazine, the same could be done for humans. Scientists report they are just a few years away from testing. Much of the proposed technology is at extreme odds with Catholic teaching regarding IVF and surrogacy. And joining us tonight to discuss is Katie Faust, founder and director of the Children's Rights Organization, Them Before Us. Katie, welcome. Great to have you on. Uh, a lot to unpack here, but first, we're really talking about potential baby factories here and, and where pregnancy and birth are actually removed from the process. What's your reaction to all this and also the danger with this? Well, it's not just contrary to Catholic teaching. It is contra contrary to the rights and well-being of children. And that is the basis on which I argue against nearly all reproductive technologies. They are not child-friendly. Certainly, artificial wombs are not child-friendly. Um, they view the child as a designer, often disposable product. And the creation of artificial wounds would lead to exactly what you said, factory floors of children. Um, and that is not who children are, what they deserve, or what they're made for. Yeah, and Katie, let's talk about the children a little bit more. I mean, what type of impact uh, do you think this could have on a child, you know, gestating in a plastic bag, so to speak, for nine months rather than inside of their mother's womb? Well, we've already taken several dystopic steps away from the way that children should be conceived in the loving embrace of their own mother and father. We know that IVF, um, even using mother and father's own gametes, presents serious risks to children in terms of developmental risks later on in life. Um, we know that swapping out one of the genetic parents for a donor, um, a third party through either sperm or egg, leads to feelings of um, identity struggles and commodification. We know that children who are separated from their birth mother at the time that they are born often suffer what adoptees call a primal wound. That loss of that primary relationship um, is something that has impacted their ability to develop, trust, and attach later on in life. So we've already seen how experimenting with creating children in laboratories has not gone well for the child. So how do we think it's going to go when we completely remove the mother, the human touch, right from the beginning. Um, you know, before I was a mom, I worked at a Chinese adoption agency and I walked the floors of orphanages of children who were starved of human touch in their first couple months. Um, these children didn't cry much of the time because they simply did not have one of the core relational needs that babies and humans are made for, and that is human connection. How do you think that's going to go when you remove that during the most formative first nine months of a child's life, it won't go well. We are going to damage these children in a ways that our species has never before seen. Yeah, and Katie, where do you think things go from here? And do you think there is a way to reverse course when it comes to the artificial creation of children? Well, we have to get very serious about defending these little lives. And unfortunately, well, fortunately, we understand what that means when it comes to fighting abortion. But we must take those pro-child convictions into the world of reproductive technologies as well. Because when you want to talk about embryonic life, IVF destroys more babies per year than abortion does. And so we at Them Before Us try to make a very strong case for the rights of a child, not only their right to life, but their right to their mother and father, which is very often, even for the babies that survive the IVF process, which is about 7% on the whole of children created in laboratories who will end up being born alive, those 7% very often have their right to their mother or father or both violated very often through technologies like surrogacy. Um, how do we stop this train? We have to get very serious about defending the fundamental rights of children, the right to life, the right to their mother and father. And that begins now by taking a very serious look at the technologies that are already in place to create and commodify children. Okay, great to be with you today. Thank you for your insights and God bless you. Thank you for what you do. Thanks so much.